so now we are going to see about the duodenum this is c shaped loop is the duodenum this is the pyloric end the pyloric end can be identified in the cadaver by the bile staining so this is the first part of the duodenum horizontal part 5 cm in length the proximal 2.1 cm is peritonized distal 2.5 cm is retroperitoneal this extends from pylorus to the superior duodenal flexure at the superior duodenal flexure the horizontal first part of the duodenum will become the second vertical part of the duodenum the vertebral level of the first part is l1 this is second part of the duodenum this extends from the superior duodenal flexure to inferior duodenal flexure then comes the horizontal part which extends from the inferior duodenal flexure up to the midline where the abdominal aorta is placed after that this is the fourth part of the duodenum which is ascending this will go and bend anteriorly at duodenal jejunal flexure where it continues as the jejunum so first part second part third part and fourth part first part l1 level second part l1 to l3 level third part l3 level fourth part l3 to l4 level finally duodenal jejunal flexure this is the interior of the second part of the duodenum you can see circular mucosal folds these are permanently present these are called as plica circularis then you can see a small triangular elevation this is called as major duodenal papillae this is roughly 8 to 10 cm from the pyloric end of the stomach overlying the major duodenal papillae is a semi lunar shaped circular fold mucosal fold which is called as plica semi circularis 2 cm above it you can see a minor duodenal papillae with the opening of minor pancreatic duct in between the minor pancreatic duct and the major pancreatic duct there is a longitudinal mucosal fold which is called as plica longitudinalis so minor pancreatic duct opening in the minor duodenal papillae the major duodenal papillae receiving the opening of major pancreatic duct and common bile duct passage together forming ampulla vater over that is a plica semi circularis plica longitudinalis the rest of the mucosal folds are called as plica circularis this is a classical feature of second part of the duodenum the plica semi circularis and longitudinalis are often used during endoscopy to locate the major duodenal papillae and the minor duodenal papillae stomach with the pylorus and this is the first part of the duodenum the first part of the duodenum you can see it is 5 cm long the proximal half is peritonized you can see the greater omentum attachment and the lesser omentum attachment this proximal half is peritonized the distal half is retroperitoneal so anteriorly it is related to the visceral surface of the right lobe of the liver and the neck and the body of the gall bladder so neck and body of the gall bladder and the visceral surface of the right lobe of the liver that is related to the first part of the duodenum superiorly it is related to the structures of the anterior side of the epiploic foramen this is proper hepatic artery this is common bile duct posterior is a portal vein proper hepatic artery common bile duct this is portal vein so these are the three structures placed in the right free margin of lesser omentum anterior to the epiploic foramen my finger is now passing through the epiploic foramen so this is the superior relationship of the first part of the duodenum the inferior relationship of the first part is the head of pancreas this is the pancreas this is related to the inferior aspect of the first part of the duodenum so superiorly epiploic foramen inferiorly head of pancreas anteriorly neck and body of the gall bladder posteriorly will be the gastro duodenal artery the bile duct portal vein posterior to all that will be inferior vena cava of the duodenum from the supra duodenal flexure to the infra duodenal flexure it is related anteriorly 
to the visceral surface of the right lobe of the liver and then transverse colon suspended by transverse mesocolon below the coils of small intestine so anterior relationship visceral surface of the right lobe of the liver transverse colon with transverse mesocolon below the coils of small intestine once i reflect all these i will separate the or deviate the second part of the duodenum so that you can see posterior relationship clearly so this is right kidney with the renal vessels entering and leaving the right kidney then right sovus major muscle right ureter right gonadal artery and right edge of the inferior vena cava so posteriorly it is related to right hilum of right kidney with renal vessels entering and leaving and right ureter right gonadal vessels right sovus major muscle and right edge of the inferior vena cava so this is the second part of the duodenum to its right side is a hepatic flexure of colon where ascending colon continues as transverse colon to its left side is a head of pancreas in this groove between the head of pancreas and duodenum only we have the superior and inferior pancreatic or duodenal vessels arterial arcade and common bile duct so to its left side is head of pancreas to its right side is hepatic flexure of colon anteriorly visceral surface of right lobe of the liver and transverse mesocolon suspending the transverse colon and coils of small intestine posteriorly hilum of right kidney right ureter right gonadal vessels right edge of inferior vena cava and right sovus major muscle so this is the third part of the duodenum extending from inferior duodenal flexure to the midline this is related anteriorly to the root of mesentery this is a root of mesentery containing superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein within its two layers this crosses the third part of the duodenum anteriorly and coils of small intestine superiorly the third part is related to the head and ancillary process of pancreas inferiorly to the coils of small intestine posteriorly when i lift the third part of the duodenum you can see the following structures from right side to left side first one will be ivc receiving the right gonadal vein then abdominal aorta giving rise to inferior mesenteric artery so ivc with right gonadal vein draining into it then aorta with inferior mesenteric artery origin up to aorta only the third part beyond that it is called as fourth part this is the fourth part the ascending part after the third one ascends upwards and towards the left side up to l2 level then bends anteriorly to form the jejunum this is a duodeno jejunal flexure this is a duodeno jejunal flexure this is the fourth part so the fourth part is related to the transverse colon overlapped by the stomach this is transverse colon with transverse mesocolon and stomach it will be related about to the body of pancreas to its left side will be left kidney and to its right side will be ancillary process of the pancreas this is ancillary process of pancreas so to its right side ancillary process of pancreas to its left side left kidney superiorly body of pancreas inferiorly coils of small intestine anteriorly transverse mesocolon and transverse colon overlapping all that will be the stomach the posterior inferior surface of the stomach the in situ structure where you can see the third part crossed by the superior mesenteric vessels 
and that will be related to the second part hilum of kidney third part will be related to gonadal vessels right ureter right soas major muscle ivc abdominal aorta with origin of inferior mesenteric artery up to this is third part and this is the fourth part ascending part extending from the aorta up to l2 level where it bends down as jejunum so this will be related to its right side to the uncinate process of pancreas to its left side to the left kidney superiorly to the body of the pancreas anteriorly to the transverse colon above uh, that will be the posterior inferior surface of the stomach posteriorly it is related to left ureter left soas major muscle left gonadal vein draining into renal vein and left gonadal artery arising from the aorta that will be the posterior relationship of the fourth part of the duodenum left cress of the diaphragm left sympathetic chain left soas major left gonadal vessels left ureter